Last month, the US announced that all promised M1A1 tanks have been delivered to Ukraine. These tanks are right now most likely being used for training, before they will eventually be used on the front line against the Russians. So now we will take a look at what variant of M1A1 did Ukraine receive and how would those tanks perform when compared to the Russian tanks in fire control system, firepower, mobility and protection. And if you would like to be protected, you will love today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN offers the best deal in the market. For only $170 per month and 6 months extra, you can enjoy the most affordable online protection with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also unlock your favorite content all over the world. Can't access a specific Netflix show while abroad? Not a problem anymore, Atlas VPN got you covered. Atlas VPN also allows you to keep your Google searches private and gives you organic search results without anyone tracking your activity. What's more is that it's not just a VPN. Atlas lets you block all malicious links, ads and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Furthermore, it helps you save coins by saving you the best deals while shopping online, including subscriptions like Netflix or Spotify, airlines, hotels and more. In addition to all of that, Atlas VPN allows you to protect an unlimited number of devices with a single subscription. Grab the big deal because now Atlas VPN Premium is just $170 per month plus 6 months extra. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can make this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick as it's a limited time offer. First, the only thing we know for certain is that the tanks Ukraine have received are M1A1 tanks. For those who don't know, there are a lot of sub-variants of M1A1 tanks, so this leaves us with two possible variants, M1A1 FAP and M1A1 SA. That is because those are the only two variants that still exist in the US inventory. M1A1 FAP is the former USMC tank, and the M1A1 SA is the army variant. Now, technically, it doesn't really matter which one of those Ukraine received since they are very similar. I will get to that in a bit. Now, as to what variant is most likely to have been sent, I don't know. Fab tanks have been purchased by Poland, so it is unknown how many of them, if any at all, are still in the US inventory. M1A1 SA tanks are still in active service, so it's possible that some of them would be sent in order to get replaced by new M1A2 FP3 tanks. I don't know. But as I said already, it doesn't really matter. Both Fab and SA have upgraded armor that's on the level of M1A2 SAP. Both have second generation thermal for the gunner and both have stabilized remote weapon station with thermal for commander. There are some small differences in suspension, transmission, but nothing major and nothing that would really be game changing in comparison to the other tank. So yeah, it doesn't really matter which one of these two models it is. So for the rest of the video I will simply be referring to the tank as M1A1. When comparing M1A1 to Russian tanks we need to make something clear. Russians are operating with a wide variety of tanks, from T-62s to T-90Ms, and the difference is obviously massive, so I will try to generalize things as much as I can. M1A1 has second generation thermal for the gunner, which is better than any Russian tank that doesn't have thermals, but it's somewhat comparable to the latest Russian tanks like T-80BVM, T-72B3 and T-90M. Those do have third generation thermal, but the second generation on Abrams is much better than most second generation thermals out there, so Russian tanks wouldn't have a clear advantage in that field. But when it comes to any other tank, well, Abrams is just superior. Because there are either tanks with no thermals at all, or tanks with the cheap, uncooled thermals, like the upgraded T-62s and T-72 tanks. Speaking of uncooled thermals, the Commander FM-1A1 has a stabilized remote weapon station with uncooled thermal sight. This is, of course, much inferior to the actual panoramic CITV, but it does beat majority of Russian tanks in the fact that they don't have any kind of thermal for the commander. This includes T-80BVM, T-72B3, T-90A and many others. T-90M is the only tank that would have advantage in this field, since it has an actual CITV for the commander with proper, cooled third generation thermal. Another problem with this remote weapon station is that it can't really be used in the same sense CITV can. Sure, it can be used for spotting, but proper CATVs have override mechanics, which the commander can use to override the turret when he spots a target. The M1A1 commander does have his own turret controls, but they don't work in conjunction with the sight. Now, the firepower of M1A1 largely depends on the ammunition. All we know about ammunition for now is that the APFSDS that Ukraine is getting from the US are depleted uranium projectiles. 
This doesn't tell us much either, since all Abrams CP FSDS projectiles for domestic use have been made out of depleted uranium. Now, we do know that MA29 and MA29A1 have been completely gotten rid of, so we can take these out of the equation. But according to some people I spoke to, there are still MA29A2 laying around, so it's possible that they would want to get rid of them from storage, which would mean that they would get to keep more of their modern MA29A3 and A4 shells, and would, at the same time, be getting rid of shells that were destined for scrapping anyway. But the amount of these is not known, so it is possible that Ukraine would be receiving a mix of MA2982 and MA2983 shells, both of which are excellent, the latter being very good at dealing with most Russian tanks, since it was specifically designed to deal with heavy ERA like Contact 5. MA2982 would be able to deal with some older tanks, but it is questionable if it would penetrate the very front of the latest tanks like the ATBVM or T90M because of Relict. MA2983 should be able to penetrate the ATBVM because of its poor base armor, which dates back to the early 80s, with T90M being questionable since we don't know much about its base protection. Of course I'm saying all of this purely from the speculative point. I don't know the exact performance of these projectiles and the Russian armor. They might be able to penetrate all of them without problems, or might be unable to penetrate even the T-72B3. I don't know, I'm just speculating, as I said. But the biggest problem is not M1A1's ability to deal with enemy tanks, it is to deal with infantry, and I'm saying that because of the ammunition. The US has lacked a proper high explosive fragmentation projectile for a long time. They are only now remedying the issue with the new advanced multi-purpose high explosive, which is still technically not in active service, so there is no way Ukraine will be receiving any of these projectiles. Their anti-infantry projectile would be MPAT, which is a heat shell with small frag sleeve that is meant to deal with helicopters since it has a sensor that detonates the round against airborne targets. It's not really meant to deal with infantry, but can be used in that regard. The problem is that it is nowhere near as effective as an actual high explosive fragmentation that Russians have been using on their tanks since forever. This includes Ukrainian tanks as well, since they inherited them from the USSR. So it remains to be seen what kind of shell Ukraine will have for Abrams in order to deal with infantry. Now, when it comes to the protection, M1A1 has one clear and massive advantage the safe ammo racks. All ammunition in the tank is located in the safe ammo racks with blowout panels, so the survivability is unmatched by any Russian tank. That is probably the best thing about Abrams. When it comes to the armor protection, well, it is obviously classified, but the front should provide decent protection against a lot of threats, and the side armor should be able to stop at least RPG rockets on the turret, but the hull should be able to do that on certain angles only. A direct hit to the side of the hull would most definitely penetrate, which is the case with most Russian tanks too anyway. The problem is the artillery protection though. The roof armor of Abrams is not any better than the roof armor of Russian tanks, and we have seen what happens when they get hit by artillery. So M1A1 is still going to be vulnerable to artillery, just like any other tank out there, except for maybe STRV-122, since this tank has upgraded roof armor. And for the mobility, there isn't much to talk about, all tanks are pretty mobile. But Abrams has a massive advantage in the fact that it actually has a very high reverse speed, which most Russian tanks lack. So this is obviously a big plus for Abrams. So to sum it up, 5 control system is comparable to a lot of modern tanks, with it clearly being better than the ancient ones the Russians are using. Firepower when it comes to dealing with tanks is excellent, but dealing with infantry is questionable because we don't know what kind of ammunition they will receive. Protection is decent with excellent survivability, and mobility is also great with clear advantage of great reverse speed. If we get any updates, I will make sure to let you all know. That will be all. If you like my content, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.